Hi, this is April, and we are going to be creating a beautiful pineapple pink palette today in the comfort of your own home, but you do have the experience of having a personal instructor helping you every step of the way. Um, we're going to be having a great time doing this a little at a time. You're going to be able to pause anytime you need to catch up. In fact, the design, is, uh, the design of the video is such that you can do that as we go through. We're going to go through our materials, and firstly, I want to remind you to check um, your instructions on how to prepare your paint space. Make sure that you're clothed appropriately and that there's protection uh, from the paint in the area around you. Okay, um, we've got some materials to go over. Firstly, your paint brushes. Your paint brushes include a chip brush. It's a very large brush, looks like a house painting brush a wedge brush, it is wedge shaped, thus the name, a line brush, which is a smallest brush you used for making lines, and of course just a pencil, and hopefully you know what that looks like. <laughs> okay, also we have some beautiful paints we're gonna be using on our paint palette. Um, you keep these stored until you're ready to use them, make sure they're flat so they don't spill somewhere. Um, we have of course white, this is a very dark blue. It is a blue, even though some of you can't tell. This is an aqua. This is a very dark green. Yellow you should also have orange and pink, and they may not be in that order, but those are our colors. All right, we also have our palettes that we're going to be working on. They look very similar to the original, um, which you also have a printout of to reference to. You have a little bit of sandpaper. You don't want to turn this into a big pile of sawdust. You just want to gently basically sand off anything you feel is too sharp or anything that's going to come off in your paint or give you a splinter. And be careful not to get a splinter if you can while you're doing this. Make sure your skin doesn't hit this, just the sandpaper. And usually there's not a lot of that need. Like I said, you're just knocking off anything that might give you a splinter or that you just don't like very much. All right. So we are ready to get started. I'm going to give you just a minute. You can pause here if you need more time to sand your palette. All right, now we are ready to begin painting our background. You should have some water in a jar. If you don't have that yet, stop and make sure you get that before we continue. Any kind of jar that you don't mind getting paint on or disposable cup is just fine. We're using a mason jar. You're going to be using your big old chip brush, the biggest brush you have, and we're doing what is called a wash. A wash is mostly water, which you have in that cup we talked about, and paint. So you're going to grab some water with your brush. My brush is all wet. I'm going to grab probably about half of all this white I've got here, and just a little bit of yellow. How much yellow? That's right, just a little bit. Anyway, you're going to mix that around with your white. And you'll get a very pale yellow. You can even throw a little more water in there by adding water to your brush and mixing that around just one more time. You can make this more yellow by adding more yellow to the white mixture and get it to kind of be a lemon yellow that's kind of thin. When we apply our paint to our, um, our board, we want to consider, do we want to have a little bit of wood showing through the paint? If we do, we have to be careful as we put the paint on not to just slap it on the whole thing. But if you want to, you can also paint the whole thing one solid, consistent color. That's a point of preference. You can do either, whatever suits you best. You are the artist. All right, we're gonna be just sliding this up and down. It's okay if your paints aren't mixed very well. It kind of gives it a more artsy effect if they aren't. As long as you're swiping up and down, you'll be doing just fine. I'm going to choose to leave my edges a little rough, so as my paint wears off my brush, I'm just going to not work really hard to get those edges covered, but I will cover the center a little more aggressively. So, here we are, we're continuing. If you get hair in it, take it out. <laughs> Dog hair, cat hair, people hair. You may want to, uh, if you have an easel, Put it on the edge of your easel so you don't run into the easel. Chances are you're probably doing flat on a table and that is just fine, don't you worry. That's gonna work too. All right, long strokes back and forth, not back and forth, up and down. 
not a lot of paint on my brush, especially on the edges. I've let the wood show through. I like the way that looks, even like right here. Just kind of look at it as you go along and see what you think. When you think it looks good, stop. <laughs> okay? All right. So now is a good time to pause and finish this step. Then come back and we'll show you what to do next. Next, we are going to be using our stencils. Okay, your stencil's probably going to look more like this. Let's use this one. Okay, so you're just going to place your stencil centered on your surface. Um, if you want to, you can dry the background first. Um, it doesn't have to be dry, but you can dry it. You can always speed up drying, by the way, using a hair dryer. Um, common household hair dryer, or just leave it for a while and come back to it. Take your time and do a nice job tracing with any old pencil. Now some of you are going to be different. You're going to want to do this differently. You're going to be like, can I do my pineapple sideways? Can I do it upside down? <laughs> it's your thing, whatever you want. <laughs> so it's your painting. You are keeping it. And you can do it however you wish. At, at any point in this video, you say, I'd rather do this purple or, you know, whatever. Just use, use your creativity. We're just giving you some guides, guidance on how to do it like the original. All right, so now that you have your pineapple traced, um, we're going to just outline just the bottom of the, the green part here. So it kind of just rounds up, and there's a little dip here, like for another leaf, and then goes like that. If it's not exactly like that, that's fine. Even if you just do straight across, it's going to look good. Now comes the fun part. And you can pause here if you have not yet finished tracing your pineapple. The fun part is painting all these beautiful colors in the body of our pineapple. We're going to be using our wedge brush, and the colors we're going to use are all pastels, which means they all have some white added to them. So any color you use, you're going to add some white to. And the reason for that is one of our next steps is adding these cool fingerprint flowers, and they won't stand out nicely unless our colors behind them are lighter. So we're going to add white to any of the colors we're using. I'm going to start with pink. I'm going to take my white with my wedge brush and just a little bit of pink to make a light pink. It doesn't take much to make a light color. Just think of like colors you would put in an old tiny nursery. Now they use everything, but like in the old days. All right. So, and this is very simple. You're going to stay in the lines pretty much and just put on some swipes, some little patchwork areas. You don't have to be neat about it at all. This is a very impressionistic, fun, stylized painting. So it's very freeing. But give yourself at least a few areas of whatever color you decide to start with. Like I said, I'm starting with pink. You don't have to. You could start with another color. I'm going to talk you through as I add other colors. And if at any point you want to pause, you can. But the process is the same, no matter what color you're doing. Once you finish a color, wash your brush off and dry it. You do not want your paints to be runny. They are thin enough without watering down, unless I tell you to, for something like the wash we did in the beginning. Once you add one color, wash and dry your brush and try a new color. I'm going to do some uh, beautiful lime green. I'm going to use white, mostly yellow, and a tiny bit of green. I say that funny because I really, really mean it. If you add a lot of green, you're not going to get this color. So that green is really strong. Only add the tiniest little bit of that green. And you're going to apply this. If you put it on there and it's the wrong color, that's okay. You can paint over it. Um, just give it another go on your plate if you didn't get what you wanted right away. If you want even more green, you can add a little more green. That's fine. But remember the top of our pineapple is going to be darker green. So that's why we're kind of staying a lighter green for our pineapple down here. By the way, you don't have to cover all the yellow in here. You can leave some yellow showing through. That looks good. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. And just again, anywhere you want. Here and there. As 
once you like it, we're in business. Okay, I'm going to wash my brush. You're still working on a color that's super duper fine. I'm going to add some white to some aqua, get some light aqua in here. I want it lighter, I'm going to add a little more white to it. Just going to do a little bit here and there, little squiggly strokes. It shouldn't really look like a puzzle if, you're, if your colors are super blocky. I, can, I mean, that's okay, but if you're trying to look like the original here, they're just very avant-garde with their strokes. It's very free and unencumbered. I'm just going to add some white to the darker blue. So it's a different shade of blue here. Add a little bit of that. These are kind of like lily colors. If you're a lily, pull, pull, I can't say it. Pull it through, pull it through. Somebody help me. <laughs> Nobody here to help me. If you're a fan, then you know how to say it, and you can laugh at me. All right, you can even get a little experimental if you want to. If you want to use some pale orange or make like a, like a peach color, even a little bit of a purple color, if you want to add some pink to that blue, you could get a purple. Okay. And nothing says you have to do it just like mine. But as long as you got some color on your pineapple, you're doing it right. See what you think. Step back or take a picture of it with your phone. For some reason, look, looking at the image on your phone helps you put everything in perspective better. I don't know how it works, but it does. So give that a try sometime. I want to add a little more yellow back to mine because I kind of miss it. And at this point, if you're not finished with this part, which you probably aren't, go ahead and pause the video and you can come back when you've finished this much. to do something else now. Um, let's work on drawing out our leaves. You're going to need your pencil for this, and it's not very difficult. Fortunately, leaves can look a lot of different ways, so if it doesn't look exactly like mine, it's probably still going to look like a leaf. We're going to start with the middle leaf and the bottom. We've tried to carve out a little area to start it here, but it's like kind of a tilty little triangle, a little teepee, I don't know any football, something like that. But give yourself a leaf right there in the middle, kind of tilting to the left. If you need more time to do that, you can pause now. All right, you're going to give yourself one more leaf kind of attached to this one, heading in the opposite direction. Right there, attached to the first leaf. Now, I could have made that a little bit fatter. Don't cuss me. I'm going to make it fatter. All right, so we got a couple good looking leaves there. All right, the rest of the leaves are pretty simple. We're going to attach them to the original. This one, we're going to erase this one little line here. Okay. Just attach them to the one we did in the middle. Just like this is a little curve, you just follow it. Follow this line. Attach all these leaves to those center leaves we drew in the middle. Okay, this is a good time to pause if you're not finished with this step. And you can look at how it's supposed to be when you're finished. Okay. We're ready to paint some leaves. Gonna make sure your wedge brush, remember that's the angled brush, is washed clean and dry. And we're gonna be using mostly green, which remember is this dark green color next to the yellow. Mostly green with a little bit of yellow in it, just a little bit. What we, what we are going to be doing with this is basically shading the bottom of each leaf. And we kind of do it in a way that we kind of sweep towards the tip of the leaf and leave that edge kind of jaggedy. The bottom edge you can do nice and smooth. And don't super stress about getting all the way to the edges. As you can see, we're going to be outlining later in white, which will cover a multitude of, of paint sins. So we like white, it does good things for us. 
All right, so again, with the dark green, with a little bit of yellow, each leaf, you start at the base of the leaf and you just sweep towards the tip and let it be kind of feathery. I'm gonna do all these while you are working on yours. And when I finish doing this, I'll tell you, you can pause your video. I'm gonna stop you here. Okay. Alright, we're good. Okay. This is a good time to pause if you have not finished with all of the dark green areas on your leaves. Once we have done all the dark green areas on our leaves, we're going to add some yellow, some more yellow, and some more white to our original color mixture we've been using for our leaves. Same brush, you don't have to wash it. We just add to the green we were using some more yellow and some more white to get a lighter shade of green. And as long as you like it, that's all that matters. It doesn't have to look exactly like my green as long as it's lighter than what you were using. So now, we're going to use the tip, that pointy tip of our tip brush. We're going to stick that right in those tips, and that's going to help us make a nice pointy line. We're just going to drag that right into that other color we did so that we get kind of a striated ombre effect. Those are big fancy words which mean kind of stripey and fady. <laughs> All right, so you just remember to use the tip of that brush Load your brush so it stays nice and pointed. Put that tip in the point and just pull into your color, overlapping slightly. Don't cover up all your green. You want some of that dark green to show, but we just want to overlap it a little bit so we have a nice transition. Again, don't worry about getting all the way up to the edges just perfectly. Just get close. We will be outlining if you go a little over the edge or you're not quite to the edge. That's going to be just fine. Okay, well here's where you can pause if you have not yet completed your green on your leaves. All right, we're ready to do something fun. We get to do some finger painting. That's right. All right, we're going to finger paint <clears throat> some flowers that are in this design. We're going to be using our index finger. We have the most control over it, and it's usually not a huge finger. So it's a good size and a good tool to use for this particular step. So I've got pink paint on my finger. If you choose to use another color, that is fine. I did not mix it with another color, so it will be nice and bright on top of my pastel background. We're going to do five petal flowers, which means you touch your finger down five times. And if you, if you don't end up with a little hole in the center, that's okay. If you look at my original, which you signed up for, so you must have thought it looked good, um, they aren't very structured at all. In fact, <laughs> they're kind of messy. But that's okay. Still looks good. So there's lots of ways to do this. All right, so I'm going to do a total of three of these flowers using my finger, five little dots in kind of in a circle. If you happen to do four, that still looks like a flower, or six, or maybe even three might be fine. As long as you get something that looks flower-like, that's what we want. Okay. So I've done three flowers. I'm going to wipe off my finger on my paper towel, and I'm going to do another color. I'd ask you to pause, but it's, it's not complicated. You can pause if you want to, or you can just listen, and you'll know what to do when you get there. You can pause at the end. I changed my finger color to orange, and I'm going to do some orange ones. I'm going to do three of these orange flowers distributed nicely throughout my picture. Love it. I'm going to do 
one more way up here, kind of going off the edge. There we, go. we didn't even do the whole thing. We just did three petals on that one. That's cool. I'm gonna wipe my finger. This is the only time we're gonna add a little color to a straight color for these flowers. This dark blue is so dark. Let's add just a little bit of white, fudge that around with it. It's fun. You can even put some aqua in there if you want. It's up to you. Okay, you don't even have to mix it real well. It can be kind of blotchy. That's kind of fun. And again, I'm adding these cool little flowers. Might do four of these. paint is, if you mess up, you can just let it dry and paint over it. It's one good thing to know. Here's one right on the edge. So we've got a nice distribution of different colored flowers. If you see something you don't like, change it. I feel like this one's a little too dark. I'm going to go over it with a little lighter blue. And at this point you can pause if you have not completed your finger painted flowers yet. All right, the next thing we're going to be doing is outlining our entire pineapple and adding some details. We're going to be using our line brush. By the way, make sure you keep your brushes in the water when you're not using them. That way they'll stay nice and soft and you can use them for other projects, including flowers. All right, you're going to be using plain white if your white has gotten kind of thick, it's okay to add just a little water to it and swish it around in there with your paintbrush, but not too much because we want it to be pretty strong. And what we're going to be doing is just outlining everything. I want to give you a tip on lines. Um, when you're creating lines, most people's natural tendency is to sketch. Like we use a pencil, they go do 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 do. But when you do that with a paintbrush, you get fuzzy lines. And if you don't want a fuzzy leaf on your pineapple, this is what you need to try to practice doing. You take your brush, you've got lots of paint on it. Do not be afraid of the paint. It's hard to make a nice smooth line without a good amount of paint. Put your paintbrush tip down where you need to start. You can go as slowly as you want to, but just don't pick that paintbrush up until either you run out of paint or you want to stop your line, okay? So just don't, don't pick it up and keep picking it up and putting it down. Put it down, move as slowly as you need to, but go over that line and stop it where you want. You'll probably have much better results than trying to do a more sketch-like motion. We're gonna do this around all of the lines that were pencil on our pineapple leaves. This will probably take you a while. That is okay. Take your time. Do a nice job. What else is it you have to do right now? Probably not a lot. y'all are all playing your favorite tunes while you're painting. Music is very conducive to good artwork. I'm not playing any even though we usually play it in the studio because I don't want to interfere with your music. Pause your video until you are finished with this step. Once you are finished outlining the leaves, we're going to outline the actual body of the pineapple. It's not just an outline though, there's a little detail involved. You're going to take your brush and instead of just doing a straight line, you're just going to wiggle ever so slightly 
around the outside because if you've ever looked at a pineapple, it is not smooth like a, like a football. It's got these bumpy lumps that create all those yummy little sections that we all love so much, at least I do. So you're not going way outside the line, you're just kind of wiggling over the line. You should never really leave the line, you're just wiggling through it. The bottom you don't have to wiggle so much on, you can wiggle a little, but the bottom is a little smoother. Okay, so you may want to pause if you're not finished doing the outside of the pineapple yet. Once you're finished doing the outside of the pineapple, we're still using our line brush and we're still using white. We are going to be creating the diagonal lines across the pineapple that make it look more like a pineapple. They're kind of stylized and they're very easy, so let's give it a go. We're going to be creating hmm, around four diagonal lines across the pineapple in this direction to begin with. I'm going to start right here in kind of the middle and I'm just going to do a slightly wiggly diagonal line, okay? It's okay if it goes over your flowers, it could go over anything, it doesn't matter. It's going right over your pineapple. You're gonna come over at least an inch, probably like more like an inch and a half. I'm really terrible with measurements. And you're gonna go across, wiggling still, about the same way in the same direction. Now we have two lines. Come to the bottom side of that first one you did. <coughs> Do another wiggly line. All right, depending on how far apart your lines are, you may need one or two more wiggly lines on each end. I'm putting one at the top and one at the bottom. It's okay if you have a little more or a little less than me. That's fine. Just don't do 25 lines and you won't be able to see all your pretty little things on your pineapple. Okay? You may want to pause if you have not finished your lines in this direction. Once you have finished your lines in this direction, we're going to do the same thing but in the opposite direction. So we're going to start about here, kind of across from where we started our first other way, directional line, and do a wiggle all the way across. Same idea, skip about the same distance you did when you were going the other direction, wiggle across, and so on and so forth. These lines do not have to like perfectly parallel each other, like you know, if one's going in and one's going out, don't worry about it, it's okay. They're far enough apart that this is a stylized painting and it truly does not matter. Look at it, decide if you have enough lines. I feel like I do. If you haven't finished yet, you may want to pause your painting at this time. Or pause your video, excuse me. <coughs> Now we have completely finished our uh, pineapple palette, except for one very important thing, which is your signature. Most of you are probably going to want to do your signature with a Sharpie, which you are welcome to do. I'm going to use paint. It's a little more tricky, but I'm used to it. Most people sign with either their initials or their last name, and the traditional place is the bottom right of your artwork. You can also add a date. Most people just say 2020. If you write your whole name and the whole date, it might cover your whole painting. So you might want to keep it simple and keep it small. I hope you've enjoyed painting our beautiful pineapple palette. Please stay tuned for more great activities. We're going to keep them coming as long as you want them. Thank you so much, and look up everything we're doing at www.paintandunwind.com.